In this video, I balance flash with fairy lights to create a portrait with a festive theme. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. And in this video, well, I'm going to be using these. Yep, it's become almost an annual tradition for me to use some fairy lights around about this time of year on an Adorama TV video, and this year is no different. This year, however, we're going to use them in a portrait. Now, if you saw my last video on Adorama TV, you saw me do a portrait balancing ambient light and flashlight outside. Well, I'm going to be doing the same thing, but this time the ambient light is low. Very, very low amounts of ambient light. In fact, we're going to use these as our ambient light and balance it with flash. Now, I'm using a Streaklight 180, which is a great flash gun for this sort of work. You could use a speed light and get very similar results, but I do love the control that this gives me. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to end up with a hopefully a really great shot. We just need to set the studio up and get going. So I'm joined in the studio today by Freya. Say hello, Freya. Hello. She's going to be the model, and as you can see, she's wearing the fairy lights, and I want to capture the light from the fairy lights, just adding some illumination to her hair, but they are very, very dim compared to flash. But how dim? Well, let's find out. I'm going to start with my standard flash settings for my camera. That's f8 at 160th of a second, ISO 100. Let's take a shot and see how it looks. OK, here we go. So with those settings, the, the pitch is correctly exposed. But look at the fairy lights. They actually look like they're turned off. There's, there's almost nothing there at all. That's because the flash is just so much brighter than these little lights. So what are we going to do? Well, we could change the flash output so it's not quite as bright. If I reduce the power, so it's not producing F8 anymore, it's producing something a little bit different. Let's see if we can get it all the way down to something like F1.8. We'll take a, a meter reading and find out. Here we go. So we're down to F1.8. Got to remember to change the camera, of course, so that also reads F1.8. Let's take a picture now and see how that goes. Here we go. Well, yeah, it's definitely better. F1.8, the picture is still correctly exposed, and I can see a little tiny glow at the end of each of these little fairy lights. It's still not quite what I want. I want a bit more glow coming through. So what can I change? Well, I can't change my ISO. That's as low as it goes. I can't change my aperture. That's as wide as it goes. That only leaves me one more thing. That's the shutter speed. So let's try a slower shutter speed, a bit more time to suck in some of that little light from the, the, the fairy lights there. So rather than 160th of a second, I'm going to drop it down to a 60th of a second. Let's try that. OK, here we go. Yeah, it's a little bit better. There's a little bit more glow coming from the, the headgear here, but it's still not quite right. Let's try an even slower shutter speed. Let's go down to a 20th of a second. And we'll try that. Here we go. Well, at a 20th of a second, I'm definitely getting a uh, more glow from the fairy lights, but now everything looks really overexposed. What's going on there? Well, that's the ambient light in the room starting to affect the exposure. The more I drop my shutter speed down, the more the room light affects the exposure. So what I've got to do is turn some lights off. So hopefully you can still see us. We've turned off the video lights that we normally use to illuminate the, the studio. And we're down just to the, the basic ambient light of the room. So let's try this and see how this goes. OK, so same shot again. So at a 20th of a second, that is back where I want it to be. Turning off the room lights has made a, the difference to my exposure. And now the room lights aren't interfering with the exposure. It's just a combination of the flash and the fairy lights. And you can see how that works very well indeed. But at a 20th of a second, I'm starting to get into the danger zone for camera shake. It's not as sharp as it could be. Now, the 50mm f1.8, the Canon lens I'm using here, doesn't have an image stabiliser built in. So the only way I can get this sharper is to put it on a tripod. So that's what we're going to do. Let's grab my tripod. 
and we'll set this up. So is a 20th of a second right? Well, I can even try a little bit slower than that. Let's go down to a 10th of a second and see how we go. Now at a 10th of a second, you will need your subject to stay very, very still, which is why Freya's sitting on a chair. And you better warn her when you take the picture as well. So here we go, are you ready? Nice and still. So you could really hear that shutter speed slow down. It sounds much slower because it is much slower. The slower you go, the more ambient light you pull through. Let's see if we can go even slower. Let's go down to a third of a second. Make sure my tripod is locked off. Okay, here we go. And at a third of a second, now we're getting some beautiful light coming through. So you can see how adjusting the shutter speed will bring more of the ambient light into the shot and affect the final picture. So with that in mind, I think it's time to do a shoot. So we're gonna turn the, the lights back off. I'm gonna get Freya to stand up against the background and we'll do a little shoot. Okay, Freya, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Right, if you wanna hop off for me, that's brilliant. So there we go, we got a bunch of really great shots there. Freya, did you enjoy that? Yeah. We've got some excellent pictures, but which one is the best? Well, I don't know, that's what Photoshop's for. I'm gonna put my favorite picture into Photoshop and do some editing. I'm gonna do that right now. Don't forget to check out Adorama's latest contest and your chance to win amazing prizes. Every now and again, you have to make small compromises with your photography, and to a degree, this was one of those times. I really love the look of the fairy lights at a tenth of a second and longer exposures, but trying to get someone to stand still on those longer exposures and get a sharp shot is really asking a lot. And although it worked a few times, we got mostly slightly soft shots. As a result, I took most of the pictures at a twentieth of a second shutter speed. Now, if you're thinking, why didn't I just change the ISO? Because that sounds like it should work. Increase my ISO, get a faster shutter speed. Well, if I change the ISO, it would affect both the ambient light and the flashlight as well. So sadly, in this case, that wasn't a solution. However, there are a few things we can do in Photoshop to improve the picture. Let's have a look. So I've done a little bit of preparation here. We've done a, a few minor adjustments, but really what I want to change is the clarity because I don't want a hard edgy shot, although I, I do like those normally. In this case, I want a soft glow, something like that. So a lot of negative clarity in the shot. I also think we can improve the colors. I've done a bit of work in here with the vibrance and saturation, but the general white balance, well, that's kind of our shot but I reckon if I bring the temperature down to a colder color, that will work really well with the warmth of those fairy lights. That's perhaps not the blue I want. We'll just add a little bit of green in there as well and just see if we can get a slightly softer. Yeah, there we go, that looks pretty good. Now, so far I've just made changes to the whole picture, but it would be nice if there was a nice kind of glow coming out from those fairy lights. That's what I was getting on the longer shutter speeds. That's what I need to reproduce inside of Photoshop.